This is Finished Work TV, a place of inspiration, wisdom, and revelation. As you listen and receive God's Word today, your life will never remain the same. Of your calling will determine your direction. Understanding your purpose also will decide how you interpret things in ministry. The knowledge of your purpose defines your focus. If I'm truly going to have an effective ministry, there is a need for me to have a clarity of purpose. And one of the major reasons for confusion in ministry is when an individual or a ministry has no clarity of purpose. What is the direction of this ministry? Understanding your purpose helps you to deploy your energy in the right direction. When I understand my purpose, This is what God has called me to do. This is what I am anointed to do. I need to know what I'm anointed for. I'd like us to go to Luke Gospel chapter 4 and look at the ministry of Jesus and how he spoke concerning himself and his ministry in St. Luke Gospel, chapter 4, verse 16. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. Verse 17. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah, And when he has opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive and recovery of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised. This is clarity. This is direction. This is purpose. This is why I came. The purpose of your ministry will also determine the goals of your ministry the goals you have to set. Your goals should originate from your purpose. Your goals should not be based on opinions and suggestion. Your goals, the goals of your ministry, should be based on the knowledge of your purpose. Why am I saying this? Because if we try to have goals outside the knowledge of our purpose, we are doing something that cannot be rewarded. We are doing something that is far away from the environment of our destiny. Imagine me setting a goal to go do something God didn't call me to do. Because someone gave me a beautiful suggestion and said, if you act on this, if you do this, it will bring some financial dividends to your ministry. A good idea may not be a good idea. A good idea may not be a good idea. And every idea suggested to you must be subject to the revelation of your purpose and the revelation of the finished work of Jesus. 
These are the two parameters for judging every idea being suggested to you. Every idea someone may suggest to you or an opinion someone may bring to you, i like us to do this, i like us to do that. Everything we will have us do or want us to do, we need to subject it to the knowledge of the finished work of Jesus and the revelation of our purpose. Understanding your purpose also helps you to become a stable minister. There are ministers who are not stable. Today, they tell you, I'm doing this. Next tomorrow, they tell you, they're doing that. And all of those things they're trying to do is taking their time. It's taking time is a major resource in ministry. Time is a major resources in ministry. So before you realize, for 10 years, they are here, they are there, and they haven't done anything meaningful with the gift of time and the resources that is at their disposal. Why? There is no clarity of purpose. And if you look at Jeremiah chapter 1, I like us to go to Jeremiah chapter 1. Uh, the knowledge of your purpose will determine how you function, how you think, and how you respond. The knowledge of your purpose will determine how you function, how you think, and how you respond. In Jeremiah chapter 1, let's look at verse 4. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, before I found thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of thy womb, out of the womb, sorry, out of the womb, I sanctified thee and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. This is God talking to Jeremiah. I will ordain you a prophet to the nation. Clarity of purpose will determine how life can be maximized. Clarity of purpose will determine maximizing life. We maximize life when we have clarity of purpose. We maximize life. When we have clarity of purpose, it leads to you maximizing your life. You cannot truly maximize your life when there is confusion. And one of the things that produce confusion most times in ministry is when there is no clarity of purpose, what should be the purpose of this ministry? What should be the purpose of this assignment? What should be the purpose of this relationship? And the reason for purpose is to keep you in the right direction. The reason for purpose is to keep you in the right direction. So God said to Jeremiah that before I form you, I know you, and I've, I've sanctified you and ordained you a prophet to the nation. So the question this morning that you'll be answering or you're going to answer is, what is my purpose of ministry? What is the purpose of my ministry? And if I understood my purpose, am I prepared for the purpose? If I'm preparing myself for the purpose, how focused I am towards that purpose. How focused, I'm, how focused are you? How focused are you towards your, your purpose? How focused? Some people have discovered their purpose, but they are allowing situations to produce distraction. The they have discovered their purpose, but they are allowing situations to produce distraction. The because your purpose is what makes you authentic. You become an authentic minister. You become an effective minister when you have a clarity of purpose. You become an authentic minister. You know, there is, there is a tendency for people to either say she's not a serious person. He's not a serious person. And the major reason why they will say that most times 
is when they see the instability, when they see the inconsistency, when they see the person's inability to stay true to what they're doing or to what they have said or to what they are called to do. And the, the, the primary essence of purpose is to determine the longevity of ministry. The primary purpose, the primary essence of purpose is to determine the longevity of ministry. This is where to labor. This is where to put your energy. This is what to do. This is the purpose of the ministry. This is what God has come to do. God has given me a word to go and minister healing to people. Maybe that's someone's purpose. Go and minister healing to people. How cause six things are you in ministering healing to people? God asks you, I want you to go and bring a message of restoration to people. How consistent are you in bringing that message of restoration? God called it to say, I want you to go and teach people on intersection. This is your calling to teach on intersection. How consistent are you? Can I say this to us? When God reveals your purpose, he has revealed the picture of your future. When God reveals your purpose, he has revealed the picture of your future. Because when God reveals your purpose, he has also revealed your destination. When God reveals your purpose, he has also revealed your destination. There are key things we need to look out for, for you to understand your purpose. Number one, your purpose originates from God. Number one, your purpose originates from God. Number two, your passion will be in line with your purpose. There is a passion, you know, I have passion for this. You know, one of the ways you can determine your purpose is to look at your passion. What is your passion? What drives you? What is your motivation? And the way in which you can determine your purpose is to look at your potential is to look at your potential. This is another way in which you can determine your purpose is to look at your potential. Another way in which you can determine your purpose, what do you enjoy doing, even if you're not paid to do it? What do you enjoy doing? Even if nobody applaud you, clap for you, tap you on your back and say, I love you, honey, whatever, you know, if it no one applaud you, I just love doing this. What is it you love to do that when it's taken away from you, you feel frustrated? What is that thing you enjoy doing that, and, and whatever you enjoy doing has to be consistent with the word of God. Whatever you enjoy doing that is consistent with God's word is your purpose. You enjoy to do it. Those are indicators of purpose. Those are indicators. You like praying for people. You like praying to see people get healed, get delivered, get set, uh, get free from whatever addiction or situation they're dealing with. It's a clue to your purpose. It's an indicator telling you, man, that there is energy here. There is direction here. And one thing I've noticed when people are not within their purpose of their calling, they struggle. They struggle. Yes, they struggle. When you are not within, one of the proofs to know that you are not in your, in your zone of destiny is struggle. Anything you're struggling to do may not be a clue of your purpose, but anything you easily flow with, there is this flow. You just enjoy the flow. I like to teach. <laughs> I like to teach. You know, I can teach for the next six hours, for the next seven hours. You know, sometimes we'll come here. I just get to remember that some of you go to work. I said, okay, let me just close the meeting. But I like, I love to teach. I like it. I enjoy it. If you don't give me anything, I was to teach. Just give me some people who are hungry for God and just leave me and them together. Then I will teach them and teach. Oh my God, I, will, I just like it. Whether you give me something or you don't give me something, it doesn't matter. It doesn't even add. You know what I'm saying? So your purpose is something you do without a cost. 
That's heavy. That's heavy. You got to digest that. That's heavy. You, there is no cause attached. That, that is you. This is you. So understanding your purpose makes the journey of ministry easy. This is why people can abandon a vision. You know, they started pursuing this vision. Okay, I, I think I'm called to do this. They started pursuing it. They didn't have a clarity of purpose. So they did it for five years. They dump it. They start something else and start doing this, doing this, doing this. They did it for five years again. They dump it. All of those things going on is the purpose has not been discovered. And God is saying one thing. Why not sit down? Let me just show you what I wanted to do. Let me show you what I want you to do. What is the excellence of doing ministry for 20 years only to find that you are not in the will of God? <laughs> what is the excellence of, of doing ministry for 25 years, for 30 years, and only to find that, that man, uh, God is not saying, all the things you did, you are not, you're doing your own job, you're not doing my will. Ah, for these 20 years, I'm doing my own job I'm not doing your will. This is serious. You know, so there are a lot of great ministers that never entered into the first phase of their ministry. They died. There are ministers that never entered the second phase of their ministry. They died. And what leads to those early deaths sometimes in ministry, uh, not, all, not in all cases, is when people are not within the environment of their purpose. Because your security, protection, and provision is found in the environment of your purpose. This is the environment of my purpose. This is where God has called me to serve. This is where God has called me to be. This is what God has called me to do. And let me say this to you, when you find out what the purpose is, don't try to pressure yourself to produce results. That's where love will have problems too. You know, now I've discovered my purpose. Oh, what can I do? What can I do? You know, I'm trying to do this. Now, your purpose will require divine instructions to be unlocked. The expression of your purpose happens by divine instructions. The expression of your purpose, this is why the scripture said in Romans 8, 14, in Romans 8, verse 14, it said, as many that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So it's not enough for you to understand your purpose. You have to also be led by the Spirit in how you release your purpose, in how you express your purpose. So a lot of people have discovered their purpose, but how they went about it halted their life. They were not following the basic biblical principles that God's word has established in the pursuit of purpose. And so they went after it a different way. They start compromising principles because they want to prove to someone, man, I can do this. It is not about what you can do. It is about what God has instructed you to do. It is not about what you can do. It is about what God has instructed you to do. What you can do and what you're instructed to do is not at the same level. I want to say that again. I said what you can do and what you are instructed to do is not at the same level. What God instructed you to do is different from what you think you can do. Well, you can do whatever you want to do, but that is not what you are instructed to do. And let me say this to you, your reward is in what you are instructed to do. And your supernatural financing breaks forth in what you are instructed to do. So if you are not instructed to do it and you start doing it, it is also wasting of life, wasting of time, and waste of resources. Ministry is not a place where you do, sure, you want to prove to this person, I can do this, I can do that. That's not, it's not the environment. This is an environment where you hear and you do. And people who operate ministry from this dimension of I hear and I do, they do quality job. They do quality ministry that someone who wants to do this, wants to do this one, or this is what is going on right now. All oh, the prophetic ministry is what is running right now. Or oh, let me go into the prophetic ministry. All oh, the apostolic ministry is what is going on right now. Or oh, let me go into the apostolic ministry. Oh, I was told the teaching on finances is what is going on right now. Let me start teaching on finances. I was told, you know, all kinds of confusion. 
we don't do trending. What is trending in the kingdom is purpose. <laughs> what is trending in the kingdom is your purpose. That's the most important thing. <laughs> that is what is trending. It's not this person said this or that person said that. No, what is trending right now should be your purpose. What God asks you to do, that should be what should be trending in your life. Not opinion, not subjection, not what is happening around your environment or around your community or around your city, but what the word of God has said towards you. And, and those who understand purpose will overcome the distraction. One of the ways to overcome distraction is to have an understanding of purpose. Once you have an understanding of purpose, it helps you to stay focused in ministry. It helps you to stay focused in ministry. There are so many things that have come to the extract me. So many things, so many things they have come to the extract me. Told me, oh, you can't do this, oh, you can't do that. So many things that comes to the extract, you know. But 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 distraction begins with the loss of focus on purpose. The extraction begins when you lose focus of your purpose. That's when the extraction begins. Most times we'll fall into some temptation because when we started losing sight of our purpose. You know, I, I was giving it 100% or she was giving it 100% or he was giving it 100% and suddenly he started losing the gravity of his focus. And then, it, you know, the focus started shaking and it got to 60. She was still there. He was still there. It got to 40, you know. The, the focus started dropping until you get to 5%. This person used to be very focused. What happened? The extraction is on a mission to abort your potential. The extraction is on a mission for the abortion of potential. One of the ways potential can be aborted is through the extraction. And let me say this to you. The extraction is not only something that is bad. There are good things that are distraction. <laughs> the extraction is not only when something is bad or sin. No, sin is not the only distraction. There are good things that can distract you. It is good, but it's going to distract your purpose. It is good, but it's not for now. It is good, but you don't need it right now. It is good, but it's not a focus. It is good, but it shouldn't be my passion for now. It is good, but it shouldn't take much of my time. It is good. Nothing wrong with it, but it is going to collide with my focus and obstruct my passion for continuity. It is good, but I can't keep up with this right now. Just because something is good doesn't mean you should take it. <laughs> a good offer may not be a good offer. A good offer may not be a good offer. So it's important you understand the purpose. And, and you know, one of the things that keeps you going, even when you're tired, is the knowledge of your purpose. One of the things that keep you going even when you are tired, even when you feel, man, wow, it's purpose. Purpose should be the alarm clock. When, when you understand your purpose, let your purpose be the alarm clock. You know, the alarm sound, Pam is 4 a.m. Pam is, let purpose do that. Let purpose be the alarm clock for you. If your purpose can be your alarm clock, man, you are in the right direction. And let me say this to you. Never be intimidated by people who succeed outside of their purpose because their success is temporary. Never be intimidated by someone who succeeded outside of their purpose. It's a temporary success. <laughs> Well, anything outside of purpose has no longevity. That is why you see people rise up and they come down. Anything outside of purpose has no longevity. But smart to think from this, from this dimension of communication and making available to you. Anything people get outside of purpose 
has no longevity. After a while, it fizzles out or it just dies, and maybe that is the end of the story. So you shouldn't envy someone who is prospering outside of purpose. You shouldn't envy someone's ministry who is doing ministry contrary to biblical principles, and people are just after him or her. That shouldn't distract you. Your purpose should be the seal of your passion. Your purpose should be the seal, the seal of your passion. You know, we we'll put seal on papers, on documents, you know, we we'll just stamp a seal there. The seal indicates that this is authentic, this is original, and this is being approved by us. So let purpose be the seal of your passion. Let purpose be the seal of your passion, that your passion originate from purpose. So being able to know what the purpose is helps you to know what to prepare for. You don't actually know what to prepare for until you know what the purpose is all about. You need to know what your purpose is all about. What, what is my purpose? What, what, is, what is my purpose to? What is, what, who, who am I called to? Who am I called to? There's an environment of your purpose. You know, there are people who could be effective with certain social media tool and it's working for them. And maybe someone see them doing that and decided to do it and it never worked for them because that may not be the vehicle of their purpose. You need to know the vehicle of your purpose. You need to know the tool of your purpose. What can I use in expressing my purpose? God, what are the channels in which my purpose can be expressed? Now, these are part of the questions we need to ask God, or we need to make inquiry in our spirit to know uh, what are the tool my purpose need? Because uh, what our Pacific man is doing may not be what I'm called to do, uh, or, or, or what uh, Sandra is doing may not be what I'm called to do, or what Jennifer is doing may not be what I'm called to do, or what Denzel is doing may not be what I'm called to do, or what Malisha is doing may not be what I'm called to do, or what Martina is doing may not be what I'm called to do, or what Denzel is doing may not be what I'm called to do, or what Shamin is doing may not be what I am called to do. So what am I what am I called? What, what is my call? Or what Cain is doing may not be what I'm called to do. Or what, what Wilson Evangelist Wilson is doing may not be what I'm called to do. So our ability to understand that we are different, but also different in purpose. So I cannot use your template to run my destiny. And this is where a lot of people get hurt. Learn from people, but don't be them. Learn from people, but don't become them because you can't be them. You don't have their wiring. You don't have their templates. You don't have their structure. So we learn from people to improve and to do what is within us. The purpose of learning is to unlock your potential, is to polish your potential. The reason for this masterclass is to give you skill for ministry, that you become a skillful minister, that you do ministry from a perspective that is consistent with the intentions of heaven. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Am I helping someone today? Amen. So, so your purpose helps you to determine what to prepare for. What am I preparing for? In the course of preparation, I begin to understand the tools, the channel, the platform that is required for this purpose. What are the tools? What are the platforms? What are the systems that God may, may, uh, will have me use? What are the systems that I need to use for the things God has called me to do? What are the systems? Now, when God was talking to Moses, he said, build the tabernacle according to the pattern that was revealed to you. Build the tabernacle according to the pattern that was revealed to you. So you're not going to build according to what someone else is doing. You know, some people sometimes come to 
a local church and tell me, oh, Apostle, in that church, look at how they're doing it. In that church, look at what they did. I said, that church is not this church. This is not that. I don't know what they heard, why they do what they do. That your subjection and opinion was not accepted is not an indication of rejection. I want to say this with clear, with love, and with concern, that your subjection and your opinion was not accepted may not be an indication of rejection. It may be an indication that it is not connecting with their purpose in this season. Maybe in the next season, it may make sense to them. You see, when you understand these things, you will be offended. Just that I suggested something to you, and you said, Apostle, I can't do that for now. And then I got angry. Why would I tell you that? And you don't want to do it. No, a wise leader don't force leadership on people. You only make direction available. And the people have to follow. A wise leader don't force leadership on people. You don't force people to follow you. You don't force people to respect you. You in respect. You don't force people to say, you have to respect me. You know, I'm the senior apostle of this ministry. You know, I'm the bishop. You have to respect me. You don't force it. You don't force it. You, you have to live your life for people to see what they can respect. Live your life for them to see if they could respect what you stand for, if they could respect what you communicate, if they could respect what you're bringing to them. You don't force leadership on people. You don't just see people and call them your sons and daughters in ministry. It's wrong. Have they told you you're their father? Have they told you you're their mother? <laughs> you just force them and say, this is my son in the gospel. This is my daughter. I tell people do that stupidness. I see the law and I don't like it. You don't for people should determine how they want to relate with you. People should determine how they want to relate with you, not you imposing it on them. It is wrong to impose your authority on people that is not under your authority. It is wrong. It is wrong to impose your authority on people who are not under your authority. You don't feel like everybody should be your son. Everybody should be your daughter. That's not how it's done. That's not kingdom spirit. God didn't call them to you. You see, this understanding helps us to establish boundaries. And many of us take too much to chew at the same time. And that's how our joy is paying us right now. Hope you understand the parable. <laughs> you know, our jaw may be paying us right now because we're chewing too many things. You bought a gum, you bought a, you bought biscuits, you put the biscuit in your mouth, then you put the gum in your mouth, then you took a Coke and put, oh my God, then you take a, a Pepsi and pour there, and then you take pizza from a, a Chicken Republic or uh, McDonald's, you put your mouth, hey, brother, what's, what's going on here? That's a problem here. You can't do that. You can't do that. That's wrong. It's wrong. You're, you're choking yourself. You're choking your ministry. You're choking your life. You get into too many issues. You have too many problems. Let people decide how they want to relate with you. Not you forcing your way into their lives. These are ministry keys. Let people decide if they want to take you to be their pastor, if they want to take you to be their apostle, if they want to take you, how they want to take you is how you have to relate to them. As you don't go beyond the boundary and get halted. You don't get beyond the boundary and get halted. Go be to God. Amen. Oh, wow. <laughs> this is heavy. <laughs> this is a lot to chew on. <laughs> this is heavy. You know, this is heavy. You know, 
as we don't have too many issues, too many issues. Sometimes we have all of these issues because we created them. Not the devil, not witches, lack of wisdom, lack of knowledge, lack of understanding has given birth to unreasonable challenges, circumstances for us. And then we say, look at how the enemy is attacking me. It may not really be the enemy. It may be that foolishness was exalted and ignorance became the leader. Foolish, foolishness was exalted, then ignorance became the leader. And when ignorance becomes the leader, what happens? Then you're gonna have this devastation everywhere. So knowing your purpose helps you to understand who to invest into. Your investment will be on purpose. This class is free, but it's not for everybody. So there are people that God has designed that they will benefit from this 120 days masterclass on ministry. There are those that may start with us, but they may not be able to finish with us. <laughs> So you need to understand that it's a journey. My responsibility is to remain the driver. My job is to remain the driver. Keep driving. I'm driving from here to LA. I'm driving from LA to Florida. From Florida, I'm going back to New Jersey. I'm, I just keep driving. So whoever that wants to join the bus, and I shouldn't be distracted when people say they want to just get down in New York. They're not going to Mississippi. So I said, that's okay. Open the door and go down. Then I continue to drive. That is what purpose is all about. Keep driving. Don't get distracted by people who stop by the wayside because they are stopping for their journey. And you are continuing your journey. This is understanding. When you have this understanding, you will have a very peaceful ministry. All of these health issue, pressure that is coming, you, the load will just fall off. You just notice that, why am I stressing myself about this person? Why am I stressing myself? You know, several years ago when I started pastoring, man, I can sit down in my office and talk and cancel and talk and talk. I'm talking to the same person. The same person will come back in one week time, well, the same problem. I will start again. I will start talking again. Talk, talk, talk. I will cancel and cancel and cancel. Three weeks later, the person has come back again with the same problem. Then I notice it's not a counseling problem. They need to make some decision to change their life. Some people don't need counseling. What they need is to make decision and move from point A to point B. But sometimes, because of the pastoral calling that is in most of in most people's life, they call to be a pastor. You just want to show care. You don't want to look rude. You don't want to look stupid. You don't want to look like somebody who's not reasonable. That you don't want to talk to them. But the truth be told, at a particular point, people need to start making decisions. You have gotten counseling on it. You have gotten prayer on it. Make decision to go to the next phase. That's good. Because anything that does not grow have lost the true essence of life. Anything that does not grow have lost the true essence of life. So your purpose will determine what you prepare for. So your purpose in ministry is very important. Your also your purpose will determine where you go to and what you do as a ministry and how you conduct your discipleship. How you conduct your discipleship, how you raise people should be based on the purpose that God has given to you. How you raise people should be based on the purpose that God has given to you. So if, if I'm trying to raise people at these other churches, you know, some people will go and take a, a Sunday school manual from another church and then they're using it in their church. Well, I didn't, I'm not against it. But is it the kind of church you want to raise? Is it the kind of church you want to raise? You're using the manual from this other place 
to raise these people here? Is it what God told you? Or is it that a person is so lazy that they don't have time to study God's word to find that what the word of God has said for them and their flock? Your purpose should decide, should decide the meal, the word meal, the word food, you make available to your flock. Your purpose should determine the, the food that your, your flock should be exposed to. This is the kind of teaching my people should be hearing. This is the kind of teaching because God has called you to do something for him. And he wants to reveal to you how it is going to be done. God has called you for you to do something in the kingdom. So it is important how you go about doing it. So you cannot, you can learn from people. You can glean from their knowledge, their wealth of experience, whatever wisdom that the Spirit of God has made available to them. I could tap into it. I could learn from it to fine tune or to polish what I already have. Don't lose your originality. Don't lose your how original you are while you're learning from someone. Being original is important because the reason for the learning is to bring out the original in you, to bring out the unique you. And that's what the Spirit of God wants to bring out of you, to point the light for people to see, for people to watch. Wow, the original, the light. And it's so important in ministry or in business or in life that people understand what is given to them and what can be done with what they have. So this is very important. When God called me several years, he called me to go and teach people how to live by faith. It's a major calling of my life. Go teach people how to live by faith. So if someone is down, if I start preaching, they'll be up. <laughs> if someone is struggling about how to trust God, I don't know what to do with my life, if they start listening to me, hope will come to them. Because that's the message I was sent to preach. That's my assignment. To help people grow in their faith that they are able to trust God. They are able to stand on his word on the things begins to happen. That's the assignment. That's the purpose. So understanding your purpose will lead to the interpretation of things around you. So you need to understand what the purpose is. It will help you to interpret things. This is what it should be, and that is what it should be. This is where this should be going to. This is where that should be going to. Why? Because you have an understanding of your purpose. Until you discover your purpose, you are not yet ready for ministry. The discovery of purpose is the first foundation that begins the expression of the gift. The discovery of purpose, this is what it is. This is what the message is. I listened to Dr. Price, Dr. Casey Price, several uh, uh, weeks ago, and he was an interview that they granted him when he was alive. Uh, he said a lot of pastors who come to him and said, God has called me to ministry, you know. He said, yes. He said, so what did he call you to do? He said, they, they will not reply. He called me to preach. Yes, I'm used. And yes, he called me to preach. So what, did he, what is the assignment? What is the assignment? What is the focus? What is the assignment? What, what, what is the assignment? And most of them won't be able to answer that question. And he knows that it's a problem. The assignment, the clarity of purpose, this is the message. This is what I'm saying to do. Jeremiah was different from Isaiah. Isaiah was different from Ezekiel. If you go read your Bible, you will see their uniqueness. All, every one of them was unique. Jeremiah was different from Isaiah. Isaiah was di different from, from Zephaniah. You know, Daniel was different from Joshua. If you go to the scriptures, you will notice there is this difference in books, difference in writing, difference in history, difference in purpose. So there is something unique about this individual. Sometimes people are saying, nobody's following me. Nobody wants to follow me. The people have not seen you walk in your purpose. They have not seen you connect with your purpose. Because when you connect with your purpose, there is this distinction. There is this distinction connected to an individual who understood purpose. There is this distinction. You just, you're known for this. 
Anybody who knows me, I met a friend after our meeting yesterday here, a friend I've not seen for about five years. So I always tell my wife, I don't know when I'm going to see this guy. You know, so yesterday I was just driving uh, to the streets to a local church and I just saw him walking. I said, ha, ah, then what happened? So he hopped into my car, we started talking about ministry. We spent about close to four hours together yesterday. And one thing I found that is when people understand their purpose, it may take time, but they will succeed. He said, I've known you preaching this faith for over close to 20 years. You've been preaching faith, teaching people how to live by faith. So anyone who knows me knows that it's my trademark of ministry. Purpose. There must be something that people should know you for. There has to be something. That thing indicates you. Uh, tell me that this is who this person is. This is who this person is. This is this is him. You, you shouldn't take people one year to find out who you are. You shouldn't take people six months to find out who you are. As they listen to you, as they meet with you, they should just see your purpose is something that can just come out. Wow. <laughs> it's just, you're just discussing with someone, things just came out. That is it. And it makes people to know that you have a focus, you have a direction, you know where you're going to, you know what God has called you to do, because without the knowledge of your purpose, someone can be in a circle from year to year, from month to month, from week to week, and they're praying, oh God, help me in ministry, oh God, help me in life, oh God, help me with my business. There should be an understanding of purpose for every human being. There is a purpose, and that purpose is the original master plan for expression. For every human being, there is a purpose, and that purpose is the master plan for expression. There is a purpose, and your peace is in your purpose. Your joy is in your purpose. Like I said, your purpose is something you, you, you enjoy to do even if nobody gives you anything, even nobody appreciates you, but this is what your life is all about. The purpose of your ministry will help to distinguish your ministry. The purpose of your ministry will help to determine that this ministry has a distinction. There is something unique about this person. There is something unique about this ministry. The way I preach faith is different from the way that will preach faith. You can hear someone say, He's got to preach faith or whatever God may call him to do. The way I preach faith is quite different. The way I teach it is different because that was the way it was given to me. So whatever God has given to you should decide what you do. And don't try to waste your life trying to do everything, trying to preach everything. Stay within the message. Stay within the purpose. It will generate transformation in the lives of people. You know, healing is one area that God has also added to my life to minister to the sick, to pray for people, to be healed. Finances is another area. All of these are branches of my assignments. So I can teach people on biblical economies on how to prosper financially to do what God has called them to do. So knowing your purpose is knowing your future. And your purpose is your destination. Do you want to know your destination? Just know your purpose. Your purpose is your destination. Most of this confusion, worry, trying to impress people will just cease, will just die. Once you just know your purpose, you are no longer impressing nobody. Now you're living with eternity perspective. You're not living with eternity mindset. You're not living with a, a mindset of glorifying the Father. And at this point, you're not looking for attention because you already have direction. You're not looking for attention. You already have direction. People trying to look for attention are people without direction. People trying to look for attention are people without purpose. Once you have purpose, you have direction. So you're no longer an attention seeker. You're not getting mad at anybody. They don't give their time. They don't get, you have, you've grown beyond that point where you understand purpose. And because you understand purpose, you have direction. You have you're moving in the right direction. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. 
<laughs> Ooh, what a class. What a class. Someone should go back and listen to this over and over. What is that thing you enjoy to do? What is that thing you're passionate about? What is that thing that you love to do? You know, there are different dimensions of purpose. There are people that God has called them to go stand with someone. Their purpose is to make money and give it to that man of God to keep preaching the gospel. That's the purpose. That was why you hear it. That's the purpose. They may not say anything. Their job is that they make their dream business. And the purpose of that business is to generate money to move the gospel forward. So God raised them and put them in a ministry or put them in a place. If that person tried to function contrary to the, the purpose of which God has designed them, their businesses, things started moving, funny things. And I've seen that over and over. I've seen that over and over. I've seen that when people understood the purpose and they start doing it, finances were just coming. Things were just happening for them. But once they lost focus of the purpose, the struggle starts. Why? Because it is in purpose you have provision. You can never have provision in ambition. You can only have provision in purpose. Your personal ambition or agenda does not attract supernatural provision. What attracts supernatural provision is divine purpose. If you're not in the place of purpose, you're not in the place of provision. That's how it works. So God's supply is in the place of purpose. So God may call you, go stand with this minister, go stand with this ministry, go stand with this missionary. Make sure she doesn't look for food. Make sure she doesn't look for that. He has told you. And because you're doing what you're supposed to do, God said to it that your funding will continue to increase. I have one of my partners in ministry. She's not here right now. She told me something. So I personally noticed that since I started partnering with you, she used to be a friend of, of this ministry for years, you know, for over close to five years. And, but at a particular point where I'm not hearing from her anymore, and she was sharing with me of recent and said, I noticed that when I partnered, my life started changing. My business started getting better. And she's into sales in our company. And she became the number one salesperson. He said, I noticed that as I do that partnership, God keeps adding to me. Now, she started sharing with me how God started doing things. Now, that never happened before, but that is part of the calling. That's her purpose. God has put her there to do that. And as long as she's doing that, God continues to do his part. Because how God works is this. If he calls you to do something, as long as you're in obedience, you have his partnership. But once you have your will, you want to do things your way, he doesn't force you. He allows you, but you cannot enjoy his partnership. His partnership is in his will. God can only partner with you when you're in his will. But when you're pursuing your personal agenda, you're on your own. And that pursuing personal agenda is what makes us struggle a lot. Me, I hate to struggle. Me, I don't like to struggle. You know, that trying to do your own personal thing, my thing. Don't try to do your thing. Try to do God's thing. Don't try to do your thing. It's not about you. Once you do God's thing, like what Jesus said, he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And every other thing will be added to you. It's in a very powerful principle of purpose that the first thing to do is the kingdom. And let me say this to you. When you are in the will of God, you are in the place of blessing. When you are in the will of God, you are in the place of blessing. So understanding your purpose, whatever the purpose may be, or whatever the Spirit of God may have called you to do, understand it, stay with it. And let me say this before I start concluding. Your place of purpose is not a perfect place. Your place of purpose is not a place where you will not, where you will not be offended or things may, everything will not work perfectly. It's not true. Your place of purpose may also be your place of challenge. Your place of purpose may also be a place of temptation and distraction. So if you see those things, don't try to just say, man, I'm so tired, I can't continue with this. No, You're, because the enemy will fight you. I was reading something from Nobel Hayes this morning, and he said he went to somewhere to preach. It, it was on healing. He went to somewhere to preach, and uh, he was trying to raise some people. He noticed that he became sick. He became so sick that he couldn't go out to preach. And then the devil told him, you see, I'm going to kill you. I'm, you're going to die here. Then he said that the devil talks too much. And that's why he got into trouble. That Satan talks too much. And that is why Satan got into trouble. So he jumped up 
I said, I'm going to the bathroom to take my bath. <laughs> Since you said you're going to kill me, I'm going to prove to you that you can't kill me. He went, took his bath, and all the infirmity left his body. He went ahead and started preaching. So he was saying that Satan talks too much, and that is why Satan is getting into trouble. <laughs> I was laughing while I was hearing that. You know, so when, when God calls you to do something, don't say there will be no persecution, there will be no trial, there will be no challenge. All of those things will come. But purpose is greater than persecution, than opposition, than crisis, than what, like, than financial crisis. You don't have money, but if you have the knowledge of your purpose, it will attract money. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching this morning. We'll be back again tomorrow. I'd like you to invite a friend, uh, talk to someone about this master class on ministry. It's a free gift that God has laid in my heart to share with ministry leaders around the world. And it will be my pleasure to be your chef with the word of God, serving, baking the word of God and serving it every day for the next 120 days. And I believe God that as these classes go on, your life will never, 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 never remain the same. So I'd like you to talk to a friend. This is not about trying to be famous or trying to be popular. That's not the goal. The goal is just to invest into people and help them deploy their potential and express the greatness in them. The true essence of the kingdom is team spirit, is collaboration, is moving the direction of together. With that strength, you can do more. So I wanted to invite someone tomorrow. Go around, text a friend, talk to a friend, tell them to come in. It's free of charge. We are not paying anything. Just sit down for one hour. Your whole orientation and perspective of ministry will be repositioned and then you have direction and refreshing that will help you take the lead in the right direction. And also you can subscribe to our YouTube channel on YouTube. It's Straight Man Teachings on YouTube. And I want to encourage you to subscribe. And also you can watch us every day by going to finishworktv.com. And also you can get our books by going to amazon.com. There is greatness in you. And four other things you need to know about your future is available on amazon.com. These are two books, and those books are really, really powerful. They are life-changing. So I want to encourage you to order for those books, and your life will remain the same. If you want to partner with this uh, project, one around 20 days or by, on leadership, you can go to finishworktv.com and give as the Spirit of God will lead you, or you can go to PayPal, it's written on teaching at gmail.com. Thank you for watching. Until I see you tomorrow morning, don't forget this. There is greatness in you. And Jesus is coming soon. Bye-bye. Thank you, guys. Thank